What's cracking YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. As always, it's your boy, Nicholas. Big dogs gotta eat fantasy football. Yesterday was Wild Stat Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I, I throw on my Instagram, some wild stat from the fantasy football season. If you're not following me on Instagram, go do that. It's BDGE underscore fantasy football. If you wanna be entered into a free giveaway, go follow me, comment on any of my most recent posts, and the comment with the hashtag BDGE. The free giveaway includes a mini belt from Fantasy Jocks. Any of you guys that have entered already, just wait on it. As soon as I get the belt, I will decide a winner as well as a BDGE father hat, daddy hat. So two giveaways, two different people. Today we're getting into five crazy stats that I found from last year's fantasy football season as well as a few of the seasons prior to it just leading up basically a few stats that were crazy just from last season and then some of the trends that we're seeing over the last few seasons that have kind of stood out or interesting to me and I'd like to thank our sponsors for this video monster y'all are the titties very much appreciate you guys sending me out free monsters without your energy I would never be able to get through all these videos just kidding, they're not my sponsors. I don't know what they're waiting on. Monster, if you listening, I'm here. Help! I need y'all behind me. I need y'all to back me. I'm telling you, we could do great things together. Get into the fantasy football industry now while you can. Because in a year, when you hit me back and you're like, oh, you know, we really want to work with you, I'm going to be like, it's all about Nas. We bringing Nas back. We bringing the Nas energy drinks back, bruh. All right, anyways, let's get into the fantasy football stuff. Before we jump into the actual numbers and the stats, I do want to I want to get this out here for you guys, and I, I wrote this on my Twitter, but I wanted to give everyone a chance here. I'm looking for people to help me with my brand, with BDGE Fantasy Football, this well now and in the summer. I'm looking for help with blogging, fantasy football blogging. I'm looking for help with SEO, search engine optimization, if anyone's good at that. I am looking for help with Microsoft Excel. And I'm looking for help with video editing. If anyone's interested in any of those things or is good at any of those things, I don't need any really pre-qualifications other than you either already know how to do it or you want to learn, you want to help me out. Obviously, this gives you a platform because I've already built the foundation for the brand and the subscriber base and we're only going to grow. So if you want to help me out with any of those, please shoot me an email, nick.ercolano at bdgeat.com. The email will be listed below. I also need help with Photoshop. If anyone's good with Photoshop, what I want to do is develop, and I talked about this at the end of last year, is develop a t-shirt line this summer uh, for all 32 NFL teams, but not like using their logos or not just like basic t-shirts, but I want to get like good witty t-shirts for each. For the Saints, it'd be like lights, camera, action, instead of camera, you know. I want to work with someone on the designs through Photoshop so I could put them on t-shirts and kind of sell them to you guys. I need someone who is better with Photoshop than I am because I have basically no skills on that. Same way that like Barsool comes out with t-shirts all the time of like new pop culture references and stuff like on the spot. That's what I want to do, but with NFL teams. I want to kind of bounce ideas off someone who's either a, good, a big football fan who's witty and someone who has good Photoshop experience. So again, shoot me an email, please. Uh, I'd love to discuss more and let's get into the numbers. So number one crazy stat, or I guess it's a trend we're seeing is elite fantasy running backs over elite fantasy wide receivers. The NFL has definitely become a passing league. It's a passing first league, but in terms of fantasy football, running backs still very much remain elite. Now, what I did was I looked back eight years. So the last eight fantasy football seasons, we see that elite fantasy running backs have far outproduced elite fantasy wide receivers. And I'm going to bring up this chart for you guys. You could see the top five fantasy finishers, right? So RBs one through RB five, and then wide receiver one through wide receiver five over the last eight seasons. This is half point PPR. These are the averages of those top five finishes, right? So last year, the top five fantasy running backs finished with an average of 290 points compared to the top five fantasy wide receivers 
finished with an average of 232 points. So a big gap, right? So you're saying on average, wide receiver four finished with 232 compared to running back for 290. I think this speaks to uh, the bigger picture of how much more important those first round running backs are. And that's not something I realized really until I started diving into the numbers. And you could see each and every year it's running back, running back, running back, running back, except for 2015 was that big outlier anomaly of a season where wide receivers won. The top five wide receivers were way more than average in terms of their own position, right? That, that was like the highest total in that eight year period where running backs had the lowest total. And that's what led to that big zero running back theory being a huge topic for that season, right? And it kind of killed anyone who did that. And if you faded that theory, then you probably did really well that year because running backs, as you can see, bounced back really heavily. But what it shows is over the larger period, running backs are killing elite wide receivers. And what I did was the average top five fantasy running back outscores the average top five fantasy wide receiver year over year by 23 fantasy points. If you take out that 2015 outlier year, you're talking about 34 points. So on average, the, the running back, elite running back, is gonna get you basically an extra two to three fantasy points per game over an elite wide receiver. So what that tells me is, you know, it's hard to take that away on a general basis, but you know, if you say, uh, you know, for an example, a practical example, this year, right, you're, you're, uh, you're pick number six, say fucking Bell, Gurley, Antonio Brown, David Johnson, Zeke are off the board. You get to pick number six and you're debating between maybe DeAndre Hopkins and Leonard Fournette or Kareem Hunt. And you're of a strong belief, you know, this is not like, I'm not gonna tell you which running back I think is better, but overall census, maybe it might be better for you to lean the running back. Yep, you love DeAndre Hopkins and he very well might finish with a higher fantasy total than either of those two guys. As a general consensus, the elite running back is going to outscore whoever finishes in those top five running backs is going to outscore whoever finishes in the top five wide receivers to a general respect, if you know what I'm saying. So um, that, that stat alone might make me actually lean towards like a Leonard Fournette over DeAndre Hopkins at six when that's not something I would normally do. That is Crazy stat number one. Stat number two, pass catching backs are here to stay and the trend is getting more involved in the NFL than it ever has been. You could look at this chart a few different ways, but what I think it comes down to is that there are only, you know, this is something that's been said over the last few years over and over and over again. There's only a few teams with a true feature back and coaches are coming more and more comfortable to the idea of pass catching backs, especially those rookies, as that pass catching back and as specialists and as fantasy football players you have to adapt you got to adapt and you've got to let those guys onto your team and, and i think you know the way that fantasy football is going everyone's doing ppr leagues like if you're in a standard league you are doing fantasy football so wrong right like i have i've been in a couple standard leagues over the last few years and it's trash so if you're in standard leagues move that over to a minimal 0.25 ppr 0.5 ppr and the heavier the ppr is weighed the more running backs you can get involved into your fantasy lineups the more running backs to become relevant and the way that the game is played today that's how it is right there are so many relevant running backs today in the nfl due to the pass catching dimension of the game so that should definitely be part of your fantasy football league and your settings back to the charts in 2017, we had 14 different running backs with over 60 targets and 14 different running backs with over 50 receptions. That's almost half the teams in the NFL. You have almost every, almost half the teams in the NFL have a guy that's getting 60 targets or 50 receptions. So, you know, like you're getting a running back that you could use on your fantasy team from every other team in the NFL, right? You don't need a featured back. And I was looking at some of the numbers. Of the 14 running backs that had at least 50 receptions last year, right? Like I said, 14 of them had at least 50 receptions. Here are their fantasy finishes. We had RB1, RB2, RB3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 11, 15, 23, 32, 39, 41. The first seven running backs, running backs RB1 through RB7, all finished with at least 50 receptions. Then you have 9, 11, 15, 23, 32, 39, 41. Of the 14, 11 of them were RB2s or better. That doesn't include Dalvin Cook, who was RB9 on points per game basis, Chris Thompson, who was RB11, Rex Burkhead, who was RB16 on points per game basis, who all would have reached 50 receptions had they not been injured and finished as a top 20 running back. So as you can see, the reception game is 
a huge, huge piece of fantasy football. And you want to be targeting guys who are involved in that game. So if you're looking at guys like, you know, there's very big outliers like a, a like a Jordan Howard. But if you're not the one that's heavily involved in your passing game, I'm not saying you can't finish high, but it's better to target guys who are involved in the passing game. I know that sounds very general, but the stats back it up and it's not going anywhere, right? So you can lean on guys who are running back pass catching specialist specific. If that makes sense. So if you're looking for a tiebreaker, I would definitely be leaning towards guys that can that can catch the ball. And that even goes for, you know, I, I bet like a Devonta Freeman versus Jordan Howard is going to be a big debate this offseason because they're probably be both being picked between like 15 and 20 and half PPR leagues. I would lean Devonta Freeman there just for the pass catching reasons. The Freeman would be a guy that I would go with over, you know, and the way the NFL is going, right? Defenders are getting bigger. They're getting stronger, faster. The offensive lineman and, and the quarterback play is getting worse and worse and worse. And it's because of that reason. And you need guys that can get out of the backfield, get open quickly because of the way that the, the, the NFL itself is trending, right? You have guys like Kamara and Ingram, both can eat, right? You have Drew Brees, threw the ball 680 times last season. Now that dips like 540. And the, of that 540, like 33% of his targets went to either Kamara or Ingram. And it's just the way this game is going. And it's just, you know, it, it's just something to keep in mind and and use heavily as, uh, as like a baseline of where you want your tiebreakers to be in your draft. Whew. Stat number three. Let me, uh, if I'm giving you value, if you're enjoying the video thus far, do me a huge favor. Give me that thumbs up, please. Make sure this thing is still rolling. Oh, we Gucci, baby. Where are we at right now in his time? 14 minutes. Whew. We're going to get through this bad boy in under 30. I like that. Any more? We done there. Starbucks, thank you as my second sponsor. Y'all a goat. Yeah, I drink a lot of caffeine. 8.30 a.m. This is how we grind, baby. It's always content season. First round wide receivers have been the worst over the last three years. I know it's not like a stat concrete statistic, but I'll show you some goddamn statistics. Look at this chart. I'm talking about NFL draft picks of the first round. Wide receivers only over the last three years. Look at that list. You know the players on the list, of course, because so much of the draft is televised and you just hear about these players throughout the offseason so much. But you look at it and like... Look at the number of games missed. There are guys who Kevin White, Rashad Perriman, who were basically a waste of a draft pick. Both of those guys were first round picks. Like imagine that team could have not invested here and invested elsewhere. The teams would be so much better off. Look at career games missed. And then you look at the numbers. Amari Cooper is the only one of these. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 first round wide receivers that have an 800 yard season. None of them have an eight touchdown season. That is unbelievable. Unless you've picked maybe Amari Cooper, maybe Devontae Parker or Will Fuller, Fuller only because how the team has worked out and you like their potential more than what they've actually produced. You're not happy with any of these draft picks if you're the team. Maybe Corey Coleman too, but he's, look at the injury numbers. It, it's just crazy. Lack, lack of production, injuries have plagued this fucking class like, like the flu plagued America this winter. Rip, rip, rip to anyone who passed away from the flu. That's a crazy way to go. I thought that shit stopped in like the 1800s. I guess we ain't over that. Anyway, Anyways, let's take a look for comparison. Let's take a look at running backs over the same span. First round running backs pick. We only got five of them. This is a true case of quality trumps quantity. Now, I don't, can I even use the word Trump to describe something being better than or dominating something else anymore? Is that like a thing? I'm not going to get into politics here. Sorry. You look at this, right? Career games missed. Zeke has the highest number of games missed with six. And obviously that was due to his suspension. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys on that list of wide receivers who have missed six games or more. 800 yard seasons. Every single one of them have at least one 800 yard season. Actually, every single one of them have had 800 yard seasons in every single season they've had. Fournette and McCaffrey were rookies. Zeke, second year. Gurley and Gordon have had three straight years. So all five of these running backs have been integral key pieces to their respective offense. All five guys are very good pass catchers, or at least used as pass catchers in their offense pretty heavily. And you look at the eight touchdown seasons, which is definitely harder to come by, but still very plentiful. Leonard Fournette himself has more than all 12 first round wide receivers over the last three years. So what does this mean? I think it kind of goes back to stat number two. See, it goes back to stat number one and two. Teams recognize it's a passing league and they're investing a lot in this wide receiver position. And I just don't think that the wide receivers in colleges are really being developed 
to be NFL players, right? They're put in these systems. They're basically ran open. They get open by, because of the routes that they're running, because of the systems they're in, they're not developed to be precise route runners. And that's why you see a lot of rookie wide receivers not pan out. And then eventually in the third, fourth, fifth year, they break out because it takes them a really long time to develop. Whereas running back, if you're picked high in the draft, right? Like we see Fournette or McCaffrey or any of these first round guys, you're thrown right in there to be the workhorse. And that's something to take away from here. If you have first round running backs, right? And you're worried about them being fantasy producers. We could see here every single one of them produces at a high level. So if we have guys that go in the first round this year, do not be afraid to pick them very early in your fantasy drafts. I think basically if teams, NFL teams, like real life teams started to started to stop investing in wide receivers so early, unless you know you're getting that once in a generation type player. Like you usually know that when those guys come out in the draft, right? You see a Julio Jones, you see an AJ Green, where if you pick them top 10, you're going to be happy with them, right? But there's a lot of guys like John Ross picking in the top 10. You have no idea how he's going to turn out as a player, right? He could be, he's very boomer bust when you pick a guy like that. Pick a guy like Julio Jones, you pretty much know what you're getting out of him. So investing in pass catching running back seems to be a very good move for offenses. You look even outside of the first round. Listen to this list. Joe Mixon, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Kareem Hunt, Tariq Cohen, Jamal Williams, Aaron Jones, Marlon Mack, Chris Carson. All very good running backs. All rookies last year. All from the 2017 NFL Draft. And those guys all played a much bigger role in their respective offenses than any of the rookie wide receivers last season. The point is be less afraid of rookie running backs, especially those that can catch the ball, at least less afraid of rookie wide receivers. Also, this is probably going to roll back to the norm, right? You look at the year before that though, like OBJ, Mike Evans, those guys, there will be eventually wide receivers that can produce as rookies, but it's just something to kind of heed while you're drafting and don't be afraid of rookie running backs, especially those drafted in the first, second round. Stat number four, we're going to get to specific 2017 stats now, no more trends. Todd Gurley is the first non-quarterback to lead the NFL in fantasy points per game PPR since 2006 last year this is the wild stat I put on uh, Instagram yesterday so Gurley averaged 25.8 PPR fantasy points per game last year 25.8 full PPR this is the first time since 2006 that a non-quarterback was the PPR leader. Russell Wilson finished second with 25.7, so he's right behind him. Carson Wentz was third, 25.1. Again, Gurley, 25.8. The last person or people to do it, 2006, so over 10 years ago, LaDainian Tomlinson, Steven Jackson, Larry Johnson, all did it, ironically, in the same year in 2006, but no one since then. Gurley was the first guy since then to do it. That was stat number four. Stat number five, of the top eight fantasy quarterbacks in 2017, so of the top eight guys that finished as QB1 through QB8, only two of them were drafted as top eight quarterbacks in last year's fantasy drafts, according to our ADP data. Those two were Russell Wilson and Tom Brady. The other six, so you have quarterback two was Cam Newton, drafted as QB9. Alex Smith, drafted as QB22. Kirk Cousins, drafted as QB10. Carson Wentz, QB18. Phillip Rivers, QB13. Matthew Stafford, QB15. As I always preach throughout the offseason. Late round quarterbacks. I've been talking about this for like three summers since I've had my YouTube channel. Late round quarterbacks is always the way to go unless you are in a two QB league or unless you have QB point heavy leagues. Like my uh, E-Town get down league, my big money cash league is six point per passing touchdown. And it's also 20 yards per point instead of 25 yards per point. So it, it's a little more weighted towards a quarterback. This is the first year that we did six point per passing touchdown. I highly recommend you guys switch your leagues also to a more quarterback friendly point system. It makes the game a lot better, I think. I think I'm going to do a video for that, actually. My favorite settings, or yeah, like fantasy league settings. If you guys are, have any ideas for stat changes or something, let me know. Give me a comment down below. Unless you're in a two QB league or unless you're a point heavy towards quarterbacks, Late round quarterback is always the way to go because look, six of the top eight guys were not drafted as top eight guys. You're always going to have guys who finish inside the top eight that were picked late. And you could draft two or three of those guys. There's a good chance one of them hits. There's a good chance. There's a great chance that most of them are on the, wa the waiver wire, right? Alex Smith, QB 22. Carson Wentz, QB 18. Stafford, QB 15. We're all very likely on your waiver wire. Pick them up in week two, week three, you could ride them throughout the season or play two of them off of each other based on matchups. It's gonna be hard to decipher that in the beginning of the season because you don't know which guys are gonna be those guys, but you could figure it out relatively quickly. As a general wrap up for the video, late round quarterbacks for me is always the way to go unless it's pass heavy or quarterback friendly settings. Don't be afraid of rookie running backs, especially those picked in the first round. Pass catching backs are the way to go. If you're picking early, 
running backs seem to be the general consensus if you want to have a higher point total which is always the case for fantasy football and that's going to wrap the video up so please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new to the channel we'll be coming out with fantasy football content all summer leading up to your drafts throughout the season into championship week you know how we do we do live uh live streams on the sunday baby if you go follow me on instagram not only for the giveaway but i might be moving my live streams to instagram instead of youtube I don't know. I'll figure that out in the summer. That's it. Again, if you were looking to help me out, if you are good with SEO, video editing, Microsoft Excel, want to get into blogging, please shoot me an email. Again, nick.urcolano at bdgeat.com. All linked below. I'll put all this info in the description. So if you're not paying attention to me or forget, go check it out down there. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Again, give the video a thumbs up, share with whoever you want out there. Greatly appreciated. And thank you for spending your what is it, Thursday? Your, your thirsty Thursday afternoon with me. I'm about to go hit the gym, get a pump in. Maybe I'll do a little reading. <laughs> and, uh, and that's that. So I'll see y'all later. Leave a comment down below. Talk some shiz.